Welcome to Inspiring Stories with Hanson Surge. Discover the journeys, challenges and triumphs of some rising professional stars in London and around the world. Looking for some inspiration to revitalize your career? Tune in. Hi, my name is Alice Waitman, CEO of Hanson Search. I'm here today with Bianca Best, managing partner of iProspect London and winner of Women of Tomorrow Award 2016. She's here to share some top, top tips and career advice with us to help women progress in their career in advertising. So, Bianca, congratulations on the award. Thank you very much. Delighted. And um, I'd love to hear about some of your um, great achievements within the advertising industry. Fantastic. Thank you. Well, in terms of uh, greatest achievements, um, I'm very driven by productivity and optimal productivity for me is achieving a goal super quickly. So um, something like being promoted to managing partner at iProspect after only six months of being in the organisation felt like a phenomenal uh, moment in my career. It's amazing. Um, well done. Thank you very much. Um, prior to that, I've had uh, quite a varied career path where I've worked in traditional advertising agencies mm. and I've set up my own business. Setting up my own business um, back in 2004 was a really exciting journey. Um, it took a lot of energy and motivation mm. and time um, and it was against the backdrop of having a young family. And uh, it was very enjoyable, but uh, very, very intense. And um, the business grew from the seed of an idea into something that was a proper enterprise. And I was able to employ um, a lot of local women, mums, um, freelancers, full-time, um, drive revenue, and just build a business proposition that I could take to market. And it expanded very, very quickly, far quicker than I anticipated. Wow. Um, and that, for me, um, was really epitomised as an absolute high where I'd gone from just taking a little look at the personalised gift industry and thinking, how can I make a product that I can take to market, into, within a year, being on this morning and having a whole corner of their um, set showcasing an entire array of my personalised gift products. Wow. And that, for me, having airtime, just in the run-up to Christmas, looking at all of my products was such a massive, massive high. Yes. Um, and that really drove sales. Incredible. And, it's going to say it was a huge rocket rocket revenue. Yeah, it certainly did. Brilliant. So that was a proud moment. Amazing. So how would you say, um, or what tips could you give women who are trying to juggle a career and and manage, a, you know, bring up a family? Yeah. Um, what would your top of bits of advice be? My, my top tips are very much about being very organised and focused on those different facets of life. So understanding where you've got your work, which you love and enjoy, you've got your family, which you love and enjoy, and then you've got your leisure, your fitness, your personal social. You've got these three elements of life. It's about understanding when and where each facet comes into focus. Mm. Because if you don't have that personal blend of life and have your balance, then you're not going to be enjoying life and you're not going to be performing at your very best. So I'm very, very focused in terms of goals across each of those three strands. So I'll look at my year. So every December I go through this, what have I achieved this year and what am I going to do next year? And I have my lovely reflective time yeah. where I then consider what are my goals? What do I want to achieve personally? What do I want to do professionally? And what really matters in terms of my personal leisure, fitness, health, etc. And then I set myself little milestones of what am I going to achieve? How am I going to get there? Mm. And, and I make sure I really honour that and I'm true to that. And sometimes that is a little bit of saying no and having to push back, whether it's a social occasion or whether it's a work project it's just knowing when something else has to come into focus yeah. and having so many kids because I've got four yes. it's, it's a real juggle and I have to be so true to my values and so careful in maintaining those three facets so that I don't drop anything yeah. and, I, and I keep the balance going yeah. so, so my top tip is just stay religiously organised yes. and true to those goals yeah. and set realistic goals exactly and I love the fact that you're re-evaluating that each year because actually as your children do get older 
everything does shift and there's different challenges both in your career and your family and personal life yeah. and having to reevaluate that each year is, is a brilliant exercise to go through yeah, absolutely and I try and bring the children on my journey with me yes. so I make it very inclusive and and I try not to segment so those three facets I talk about in my brain yes. they might be segmented but in my actual life I make sure that actually it's all intertwined and um, there is a continual blend. So uh, there's a famous quote Richard Branson has and he, he says, work isn't work and play isn't play, it's all living. And yes. I love that Brilliant. quote. It's just, it resonates really, really well with me. And when I look back at my career and I look at my CV, I just see it as a chronology of passions. Yes. And everything just fits around my interests, my family and it all blends together. So when I think about the goals that I have each year, I make sure I talk to my children and we sit down and we say, what are we going to do together? And do you understand what mummy's career is going to be doing? And I'm going to be in London, I'm going to be travelling and what do you think of that? And, and they come on the journey with me and we all buy into it and we all agree. So it's a really collaborative decision and, and right. that really helps maintain the balance as well. Brilliant. I love that. I just think that's so so helpful for other other people out there and bringing them in on that journey. Yeah. Um, as a, as a mum, I know it's challenging and um, the more buy-in that you get from your kids and what you're doing, it's absolutely fantastic. Yeah, um, it's so important. I can tell a specific story, actually, before I took this job. Yes. Um, working at iProspect, um, I had a local job, so I was able to do the school run every day, and it was, it was uh, quite easy to be there, be more visible and present as a mummy. And then got offered this job, which was located in central London. I knew I'd be commuting a lot more and uh, away from the home a lot more. So it felt like a big decision. And my husband was nervous about it. I felt nervous about it. Is it the right decision or not? Although I was very excited by the proposition, I had to think about the impact on our family because I'd need more childcare, they'd see less of me. So I sat them all down, all four of them, and said, right, mummy's been offered this job and it could mean amazing things for our lives because we're going to get great holidays and mummy's going to be growing and developing my career and what do you think? Should I go for it or do you want me to stay here and be at home with you? And unanimously, the children all said, absolutely, go for it, go for it, go for it because they wanted the holidays yes. and the Xbox for Christmas yeah. and all the things that it means for them. But my daughter said as well, she said, it's fantastic and I want to be like you one day, mummy. So wow. I want to see your career growing. So I knew that I could accept that role having all of my children right behind yes. me and encouraging me and we'd all made that decision unanimously so Brilliant. that was a really positive start point great i love that story thank you for sharing it so um someone's obviously inspired you at some stage your daughter has been inspired by you um <laughs> who who's been inspirational in your life well in terms of role models for me when i look back over my career i would say Career development has been very much self-made. Mm -hmm. I've been very driven by my own goals and wanting to achieve certain milestones. So specifically in my career, I haven't been led by a particular role model. Mm -hmm. I, you know, absolutely. I think, you know, having you know, whether you, it's yourself driving your career or other people out there, but, yeah. but role modelling is important yeah. and, it's, and it's great. And that's why things like Women of Tomorrow Awards are fantastic to be able to showcase individuals. So what do you think the advertising industry needs to do? I mean, they, you know, they've set um, targets for greater diversity at the, at the board level yeah. um, and, yeah, they're, and they're brilliant. coming forward, but what actually needs to be done to make change? I think um, when we talk about the um, pay gap, that is obviously a significant um, issue driving the equality agenda. And I wonder whether mandating within the IPA a disclosure of salaries, so that should remain confidential, but the IPA, there should be some board, some body that evaluates what those salaries look like. An agency sh should be responsible and have to declare what the salaries look like so there is some evaluation of equality salary-wise yep. within agencies because that perhaps will make decision-makers around those salaries feel a little bit, or just think a little bit harder about who yes. gets which pay rise and to what level. Yes. So I think that's really key. Um, I think the industry is embracing the Agile Working Agenda, which is fantastic, because that really helps 
working parents and it needs to help both men and women. So having that flexibility is fantastic. It, it helps us all. Um, it's important not to be afraid to talk about the fact that you have a life outside of work. So I talk a lot about authenticity mm. because a lot of women suppress it. And you see it time and time again where women feel they need to conform to a certain demeanour that might fit in with their organisation because that's their perception of how they're going to succeed and how their careers will accelerate. And actually that's wrong. We need to stay absolutely true to our values, to our strengths, to know what our proposition is and to remain authentic because what we are is why we've got where we are in our career. So don't try and change it, don't compromise who you are, just remain authentic and then that will drive that career growth and also inspire Again, the younger workforce coming up beneath us. Absolutely. And you talked about, about the agile working agenda, yeah. and that's something that you're very much pioneering where you're at at the moment. Yeah. How, how is that, um, how are you finding that pilot? Yeah, it's, it's, it's very interesting in terms of certain members of the workforce embracing it immediately, loving it, mm. get it, understand it. And then there will be other workers that are slightly destabilised by it, a little mm. bit res- reticent to embrace it, a little bit nervous about not having a desk with their stapler and their calculator and their photos on it. So it's about taking the workforce on a journey and helping them to understand how this is a benefit, how it's enabling them to be more outcome-driven, and presenteeism is no longer a factor that will drive reward. So it's about them taking ownership, responsibility for those outcomes that they need to deliver. And we hope this is going to create more innovation and being able to work smarter, not harder. So it's going very well and it's working and um, we're looking forward to seeing how the trial ends. Uh, We're evaluating it continually and we will roll it out across the rest of the agency, making sure that we've taken all of the learnings and that we have a perfect model. It's great. I I think it's fantastic and it it definitely seems to be increasing on people's agenda and hopefully it'll help us attract better talent as a result as well, which is fantastic. So last question, Um, your top advice for women looking to develop a successful career in the industry, um, what would that be from a career perspective? Absolutely retain authenticity. I will reiterate that Mm. over and over again. Don't lose who you are. And don't be afraid of the fact that you can blend family and work. It is all possible. And I feel it's never been more possible. Today's working environment is so much more encompassing of doing it all. So go for it. That was Bianca Best in conversation with Alice Waitman for the Inspiring Stories podcast. If you'd like to be on the show, contact us on our website at www.hansonsurge.com. Thanks for listening, and don't forget to follow us on Twitter for the latest news and stories at Hanson Surge.